So this week we're kind of picking up where we left off. We were talking about diode reversing loops. And in order to completely automate a diode reversing loop, you need to be able to sense where the train is. So let's sort of change subjects and talk about sensors, sensors that will either detect the position of a train or sometimes detect the position of people. There's a whole bunch of different ways of detecting where your train is or where people are for that matter. So let's look at some of these different types of devices that are used in model railroading. One of the most popular to use is uh, infrared sensors, IR sensors. Um, the first two categories here rely on a technology that's been around for a long, 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 long time. We talked at one point about how all diodes emit light. You're maybe not aware of that because the, the uh, negative positive interface somewhere deep inside the diode is probably buried in opaque black plastic. But moreover, it's emitting an infrared light that you're not really aware of. But all diodes emit light. Well, correspondingly, all diodes, if you shine that same frequency of light on the junction, will give out a small amount of current. And as all diodes are sort of an on-off switch, uh, they can function that same way, that when light falls on them, the switch turns on. When there's no light falling on them, the switch turns off. So a sensing diode can be paired with a light emitting diode to create a pair uh, that will detect if the beam between the two is interrupted. Moreover, you can send digital signals across that beam of light. This is how most uh, television remote controls work. A very, very close first cousin to the infrared sensor is the photocell, basically an infrared sensor sensor is a photocell, but a photocell uh, is more typically something that's being used to generate uh, electricity when light falls on it. Uh, you can put a huge panel of these on your roof, for example, and reduce your power bill. But uh, it's another way of detecting motion is to simply have a photocell looking for an interruption in the light falling on the photocell. This is quite often used to detect uh, people. Uh, it's used on, say, trash cans, so that when you walk up to a trash can, the little door on the trash can opens, or on a Halloween display, where if you walk up on the porch, suddenly the ghoul comes to life. It's a great way to detect uh, the presence of people, is to just watch for the light falling on your photo cell, the ambient light, to be interrupted by a shadow falling across it. Now, another way of detecting a train being present is block detection. Uh, this is really old school, going all the way back to the earliest days of DC two rail uh, railroads. Uh, and that's to have an isolated section of track and then simply detect when current is flowing through that block of track and then you know that a train has entered that block because current is flowing. Block wiring is a whole other subject. Uh, a, B, cab control block wiring. We'll get into that at some point. But in this case, we're talking about simply isolating one small little section of track using plastic rail joiners or cutting gaps or something, and then feeding power to that section separately through a detector so that the detector knows when current is flowing through that small section of track. There's also another first cousin to this that's used only on three rail railroads, AC railroads like Lionel, and that's that since the outer two rails are both connected to the AC neutral at all times, and the trains have metal axles, if you isolate one of those two rails for a short section, it can detect when the metal axles cross by simply checking for continuity between those two rails. Now, magnetic detection, this is what I used on my garden railroad. It's how LGB prefers to detect trains. And that's that you can mount reed switches on the locomotive or on the track and then you can mount magnets on the locomotive or on the track 
and as the magnet crosses the reed switch it closes the reed switch. So if you put the reed switch on the track and the magnet on the locomotive as the locomotive passes the reed switch will shut because of the proximity of the magnet and therefore you can detect that the locomotive just passed. The other way around you can put the magnet on the track and a reed switch on the locomotive and as the locomotive passes past a certain point uh, say the whistle will blow or the bell will ring depending on how you've got that set up with your locomotive. But that's how magnetic detection works. Magnets and reed switches. In fact LGB makes a system that they sell uh, little plastic enclosed reed switches that go on the track and will run your switch machines or reversing loops and uh, magnets that you can mount directly on your locomotive. And most of their higher end locomotives come equipped with reed switches inside the locomotive. So if you place one of their magnets to the left side of the track, it will blow the whistle. If you place it to the right side of the track, it'll cause the, the bell to ring. Now, a type of detection that nobody's really using in trains, and I think they should be, I've been a big proponent of this, is capacitance. And this is used uh, most notably in elevators. I think touch screens use it too. But when you get on an elevator and you touch the floor that you want to go to, there's rarely a physical button there. There's just sort of a little metalized pad there and the circuit detects the shift in capacitance when your finger touches it. So what I have thought would be really cool is to use this on the model railroad so that simply touching some metal object on the railroad will cause something to happen. Most notably to use it for switch motor control. So you could have even a, a tiny little end scale switch stand as long as it's made of metal and hooked to this detector and all you'd have to do is lightly touch the switch stand and that would throw the switch. And for very realistic operations I think that would just be the bomb. Now again nobody's actually manufacturing a system like this. I think they should and I've mentioned it to some of the electronics uh, manufacturers and all I get back is just sort of a, a blank stare. So as I mentioned, I was using the LGB magnetic detection system on my railroad, which meant that I had to have a magnet mounted on the bottom of every locomotive or rail bus. And then I used the uh, LGB version of the reed switch and I placed one of them here and one of them here. So the way this worked, I was using the LGB version of a rectifier bridge in my isolated sections. So this section of track from here to here uh, was running through a rectifier bridge, meaning that trains in that section could only travel in that direction. And then when they got to the end of the isolated section, the uh, magnet in the locomotive would trip the reed switch and that would fire a relay which would reverse the polarity of the entire main line. So a locomotive pulling a train would be traveling in this direction, enter the reversing loop, uh, which would always have the same polarity, and just as it was about to exit that isolated section, the polarity of the main line would switch, meaning that when the locomotive left the isolated section, it would just continue going back in the direction that it came from uh, without any interruption. Then when the train got to the other end of the railroad, it, it would again enter the isolated section here, traveling in the same direction at all times until it reached the end of the isolated section where there was another reed switch mounted and that reed switch would fire that same relay which would once again reverse the polarity of the main line so that the train could just continue back toward the other end without interruption. So the whole railroad could operate like that for hours. So our next video is going to be on using this LGB system and these components. But remember, these components can easily be duplicated from off the shelf parts so that you could use this exact same system in any scale or gauge, whatever you choose, N, H, O, O, whatever. 
So that's where we will pick up next Tuesday. If you're not a subscriber and you don't have your notification bell set, then you want to be a subscriber and set your notification bell. And in fact, if you liked the video, please click on the like button. Uh, anyway, the easy way to become a subscriber is by clicking on the upcoming blue button. Zoink! Right there, the blue button. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring, and we'll see you on Sunday, because Karen and I have some fun stuff to show you. See you then. Bye-bye.